and we're back with after years again I'm going to be playing through Angus's route starting on this video and of course there are routes for a Kegar and Rowley as well but I'm not going to do those I'm going to be restricting myself from to one route per VN from uh, now on unless of course I have started a more than one route, so you're not going to lose out on them. There's just so many going on at the moment, it's the easiest way for me to do it. So that's the plan for this video. I'm going to pick things up where we last left in the last video. And Welkin's just going to be getting back to the hotel room after his run in the morning. Oh, thank God we have AC in here. And just as I close the door behind my back, I'm greeted by Kegar, who happily waves to me while sitting on the bed reading a comic book. Welkin, you're back. Good morning, Kegar. How are you today? Uh, did you sleep well? Yeah, but, if, but to be frank, I wouldn't mind staying in bed for a bit longer. The lion yawns loudly, then puts his comic on the bedside table. How was your workout? You look pretty worn out. Yes, I am. I run quite the distance with Rowley. To make it all worse, it's absolutely scorching hot outside today. Yeah, I can tell by your drenched shirt. I guess you'll be going straight in the shower, huh? I nod to him in response while simultaneously taking off my boots and t-shirt. Why the haste? Oh, uh, I don't want to miss a second breakfast and there's not much time left for that. Ah, you're right. The hotel serves breakfast until 10 o'clock. You'd better hurry then. What about you, Keg? Have you eaten already? Yes, although it wouldn't hurt to snatch out a croissant or two. <sighs> I knew you'd say something like that. <laughs> you should try them too. They're nothing like the ones from the markets. But anyway, if you like, I'd go ahead and grab whatever you want in advance so you won't have to wait in line at the buffet. Surprised by his clever planning, I pause momentarily to look back at him. Oh yeah, that would be great. Please do. I'm sure the restaurant will be even more crowded at this hour. Mm -hmm. So tell me, uh, what are you hungry for? A little bit lost in thought, I scratched my cheek, trying to remember what it was that Rowley recommended to me this morning. Mm, I think I would like... I give him two different options to choose from, just in case one of them was unavailable. Okay, I've got it. But I have to say, those meals you suggested, they sound surprisingly... Healthy? Yes, that's not really not really not in your style to eat stuff like this. Why such a change? Uh, I decided I'm going to try a healthier lifestyle this week, and this is the stuff that Rowley suggested to me for my diet. Eh? You're on a diet? You? Sort of. Let's just get better results from my training. Ah, is that so? Why are you so concerned by this? Kegar looks away, entwining his hands. Well, I'm not concerned. It's just... I just wanted... I just wanted to invite you out today to grab some pizza, that's all. Oh, I see. Well, I'd be lying if I said it doesn't sound tempting. Right. So think about it, and it's all on me this time. The lion smiled back at me, then bounced off the bed upon his slippers. Alrighty, I'm off that breakfast quest you've just entrusted to me. Okay, thank you again. You're always so helpful to me. Sure thing. Anything for you, Welkin. Have fun in the shower, colon three. Uh, I... will? I'll see you soon, Kega. See you soon. And so the lion leaves the room humming a very familiar tune. I use this opportunity to finally take off the rest of my still-drenched clothes. Then, naked, I grab a fresh pair of underwear from the closet and make my way to the bathroom. About 15 minutes later... I walk to the crowded restaurant, looking around for Kegar and Rowley. Hey, Welkin, over here. Hearing a familiar voice, I turn around, and to my surprise, I see all three of my friends gathered at the table. Wow, the whole squad is here. Cool. Yep, we wonder when you'd finally show up. 
Oh, yeah, it took me a bit longer to dry myself off. Sorry to keep you waiting, guys. Now, I just sat down a moment ago. There was quite a crowd up there at the buffet. You're lucky to have such a good friend who can help you out by grabbing breakfast for you. That's what friends are for, right? Exactly. I take my seat next to Kegar, who happily chews his croissant. And here's what you asked for. Well, most of it. Unfortunately, a certain Black Panther took the last portion of the salad you wanted, so I decided to get you this instead. Gesturing encouragingly, the lion points to the small bowl of yoghurt and fruit. Oh yeah, that will do. Thanks again. Hey now, we can share that salad if you like. I honestly didn't think you'd want to eat another one for second breakfast. Well, I guess you must really like it, huh? No, not really. I only, I like it only because of the chicken. Otherwise, it would be just too bland for my tastes. Oh, I'm actually more of the vegetables, especially the tomato. It's so fresh and juicy. But, yeah, help yourself and eat whatever you want. I really don't mind. With that said, he gently pushes the salad bowl in my direction. Without a second thought, I grab my fork and fish out a few pieces of chicken. Gosh, what a feast. Time to dig in. This is when I finally notice Angus. The wolf was quietly sitting at the other end of the table, resting his head over his folded hands. There's definitely something off about him today. Hey, Angus? Angus? Hey, bro! Mm. You're suspiciously quiet. Are you feeling okay? Oh, I... I see. My sarcastic response made a rowly chuckle. <clears throat> Yeah, as you can tell, Gus is still not here yet, and I'm not quite sure if it's because of lack of sleep or it's just a hangover. I shot the wolf a quick glare. I'd say both. Well, truth be told, you and Angus did drink a lot yesterday. I still can't believe that you managed to get up so early, not to mention going out for that morning workout with Rowley. And yet somehow here you are feeling perfectly fine, acting like as if nothing had happened. How is that even possible? I shrug, smiling wryly. A miraculous recovery? <laughs> yeah, totally seems like it. Speaking of yesterday's meeting, I was wondering, when did we actually get back to the hotel? Hmm, I'm sure it was past three o'clock when we were getting up from the table. But it took us some time to reach the hotel, with you two singing and clowning all the way along, not to mention that brief stop at the beach. So I would say it was four when... Wait, 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 wait. Angus and I were singing? Oh, we went to the beach? Yeah? You don't remember? The lion puts away his croissant, sending me a curious look. Feeling a bit uneasy, I close my eyes, trying to replay in my head the events of last night's party in any semblance of order. Not much comes to mind, though. I remember talking with Rowley outside the bar, and then, uh... I was telling you guys a story about your first day at work, but I totally have no clue what happened after that. Mm hmm? Seriously? Nothing at all? Not even that big polar bear who was hitting on you? W what? Shocked, I gulp loudly, unsure shall I even ask any more questions. Wow, Welkin, lucky you. Honestly, I'm not even surprised. Told you, you're easy on the eyes. <laughs> Perhaps a little too easy? Uh -huh. <sighs> Guys, please. I was drunk to the point I can't even remember anything. It might be wiser to actually not know what happened. Judging by the expressions on their faces, I'm more than sure I'd embarrassed myself. However, after a few long seconds of unbearably awkward silence, the curiosity took better of me. Okay, I know I'll regret hearing it, but please, tell me everything that happened. Aha. Uh, come on, after I finish telling the story, what happened next? The lion scratches his cheek, looking back at Angus. Well, 
After that story you told us, we talked a bit more about your hometown and then Angus suggested playing a drinking game, so I bought us more shots. A drinking game? Hmm. And what was the name of it? Oh, yeah. Uh... Oh, let me fix it for you. Ugh! Jeez, Rowley, why'd you always have to be so t rough? Oh, he spoke. You really did fix him. Another miraculous recovery? Well, more like a miraculous stab between the ribs. Oh! Yeah, works every time. Hmm. So, what was the name of that game again? Ah, uh, uh, we were playing Never Have I Ever. Ring any bells now? Hmm. No, not really. I don't think I've heard of it before either. Yeah, same here. It does sound interesting though. Care to explain what the rules of this game of yours are? Mm-hmm. It's very simple actually. The players take turns saying a simple statement about what they have never done before, starting with the phrase, never have I ever. For example, let's say it's my turn and I say, never have I ever smoked a cigarette. So now, in response, every one of you at some point in your life did that thing, smoked a cigarette, I mean, was down a shot or take a sip of their drink. And that's pretty much it. So it's just all about drinking. Do you at least count the scores and pick the winner? No, this is not the kind of game you're supposed to win or lose. Huh, and what's the fun part in all this? Well, the fun part is to get to know each other better. Simple as that. Oh, yeah? Well, if that's the case, then why play with your bro you've known for so long? Hey, we haven't seen each other in six long years. A lot could have changed during that time. And besides, we're also playing this game with Kegar, and since he's new in our circle, there was a lot to uncover. Hmph, well, that's fair, I guess. So, about that guy who's hitting on me. Ah, right. It happened just a little bit later as we were about to play the third round. I was getting ready to get us more shots, but you shoved me back in my seat and went ahead to buy them yourself. So I stayed by the table with Angus and we were chatting. I noticed that a huge polar bear leaned over the counter right next to you. Sadly, we were too far away to hear anything you two were talking about, but you clearly looked intimidated, especially the moment he started to play with your hoodie's drawstring. Oh, wow. Well, I know, right? It was just hilarious, and the size difference between them made the scene look so damn awkward. Uh, if only I took a photo of it. Well, I don't think this is funny, not even a bit. Well, that's because you didn't see. And you know what? You're an asshole for making fun of Welkin like that. Jeez, Rowley, calm down, man. I rushed over to help him right away. Oh, good. Nonetheless, you still deserve some serious ass kick from this whole gay bar situation you put us through. Bro, I already told you, I had no idea, I swear. And besides, that place was really nice. It had this chill vibe to it and great drinks, wouldn't you all agree? In the corner of my eye, I can see Kegar giving him a single and sure nod. As for me, I didn't feel like giving him my full approval yet, at least not until I hear the whole story. So, what happened next, Angus? How did you rescue me from the claws of that ferocious bear? Our eyes meet for a brief second, but then the wolf quickly looks away, clearly embarrassed. Oh, uh... <laughs> it's okay if we continue this talk a bit later. I, uh, don't really feel too well. You looked plenty healthy just a second ago. Well, things changed. It's okay, Angus. I can tell you still look a bit... uncomfortable. Better hop back in bed and rest some more. We can talk about it whenever. If a hangover's your problem, then maybe I could grab some medicine for you from the pharmacy? Oh? Yeah, that would be swell. Well then, hold tight. I'll be back very soon. The lion stuffs his mouth with the remaining piece of croissant, then takes one last sip of his white coffee. And what about you two? If there's something you'd like from the market, don't hesitate to ask. The panther gently shakes his head in response, and so do I. Oh, thanks, Kegar. I'm good. Uh, yeah, same. 
All right then, in that case I'll be on my way. Oh, but before I go, uh, what's the plan for today? Do you guys want to hang out at the beach? Well, well, I can say something about cooling off in the pool. Yep, I'm still opting for it. It's way too hot outside today. Is it okay with you, Kekka? That sounds good to me. Great, I still need a short breather, so take your time shopping. I'll wait for you to return. Cool, I promise it won't take long, so stay tuned. Alright, see you soon. Kegar gets up from his seat. After pushing his chair and he leaves the restaurant in a hurry. Uh, well, I guess I'll be going back to the room then. Thanks for the company. Sure thing. Will you join us once you start feeling better? Oh, I'd love to. However, I don't think that even with the pills I'll be able to recover that fast. Well, perhaps a few more pokes between your ribs will do the trick. Oh, no thanks. With that said, Angus clumsily gets up from the table. Dizzy, he takes a short moment to get composed, then starts to slowly walk towards the exit. Well, what about you, sport? Are you feeling okay? Yeah, why? Do I look tired? Nay, hey, you look fine. But you do keep on spacing out a little from time to time. Uh, well, maybe I'm a bit sleepy. But I'm sure getting in the water will help me stay snappy. Well, that's good then. Are you coming with us to the pool? Aye, I'm curious to see what this place has to offer. And also, I thought it might be a good idea if there was someone who could keep an eye on you two. Oh, that's so sweet of you. Oh, shush, it's just common sense. Also, don't forget I'm still your coach, so I feel responsible for you. Heh, <laughs> fair enough. And so the two of us spend the next few minutes eating in a quiet, pleasant atmosphere. Then, as soon as we finish our meals, we part ways at the upper floor hallway and return to our rooms. Towel? Check. Swimming trunks? Check. Shampoo and conditioner? Check, check. Hmm, I guess that's all I need for the pool. Now I only have to wait for Kegar to come back. If there are any good idea of what to do in my spare time, I open the balcony door to let some fresh air into the room. Then I flop down on the bed to get some well-deserved rest. Ugh. Finally, a moment to catch my breath. It's oddly quiet outside today. I can't hear the birds, nor the sound of rustling trees. Instead, there's that gentle ringing in my ears. It's been a while since I last heard it. That dead silence makes me feel like time has stopped. I wouldn't mind if that was the case. Even while being on vacation, it seems to fly way too fast for me. Three days have already passed since we got here, and that means we're almost halfway through. Thinking about it makes me sad. Unfulfilled. I've been looking forward to this trip for so long, but now that I'm finally here, I don't even know what to do to make the most of it. Should I take it easy and fully reset from work? Or maybe go wild and do something crazy I've never done before. And if the latter was the case, then what is the thing that would give me the most joy and make, would make this trip truly unforgettable? Hmm. A long moment passes, but as nothing interesting comes to mind, I turn to my side and reach out for my phone to check the time. I think I should be here any moment now, so I'd better get up. The last thing I need is to fall asleep and just get woken up a few moments later. It feels so good laying down here in complete silence. Outside of time and space, free from the world and everyone else's problems. Such a peaceful slumber. Just me, myself and I. This solitude. I used to love spending time alone like this. Every now and then, being all by myself makes me feel more anxious rather than at peace. I guess it's not solitude anymore then. It's loneliness. I wish there was someone here with me right now. Not to chat, not to laugh, but to simply enjoy this serenity in each other's embrace. It tears me up inside to admit it, but despite being so old, I never had someone I could spend moments like this with. A person I could truly, truly call special. Angus, Rowley, Kegar, all three of them are my best friends who I hold very dear to my heart. These are the people who I see in my most happy memories, and also the people I'm sure will be there for me if I really needed them. 
but at the end of the day, despite growing up together or sharing many similar interests, we're just friends and that's about it. Just friends. Nothing more. And while I'm truly happy to be surrounded by such wonderful people, I can't help but wonder if any of them could feel differently about me, as someone who is more than just a friend. Maybe this trip really is my perfect chance to finally go wild and take at least that first step to make the things different. But if I had to open up about my feelings to someone, who would it be? Which one of my three friends is the one I hold dearest to my heart? I close my eyes, trying to clear my mind, but deep down I already know the answer. The one I'd like to be here with me right now. The one that I can't stop thinking of no matter what. This person is... Oh, and by the way, Kekar's greyed out here because I'm playing the public version. You can play his route in the Patreon version. But we're going with Angus. I feel cold. But at the same time I feel light. Almost like I was floating in zero gravity. It is such a nice feeling. Fully relaxed, I stretch my arms and legs while taking a deep breath. Yeah, it smells pungent. It's a slightly unpleasant, yet familiar smell. Chlorine? Yeah, it really is the smell of chlorine. Does that mean... Concerned, I open my eyes just to find myself drifting on my back right in the centre of the hotel's pool. Huh? Slowly I tilt my head looking all around the place, but just as I thought, there's no one else here but me. I'm all alone, again. This is so odd. When did I even get here? I can't remember anything. Why is there this emptiness in my mind yet again? Feeling anxiety creeping up on me, I let her along sigh. And so, trying to gather my thoughts, I'm drifting, aimlessly without any will to move. Still be rotating, yet still being right in the exact same place. Where is everyone? Did I come here all by myself? No, I wouldn't do that. But then, what's going on? Everything here feels so out of place, and yet so real. Maybe all of this is just my imagination? A dream? Or what kind of dream might this be if I'm so wide awake? My mouth is dry, my teeth are chattering, I can barely feel my fingers. I'm freezing. I can't stay here like this. I need to move. Or maybe I just need to wake up? I pinch my cheeks, splash some water in my face. Nothing. I'm still here. A dead silence fills the hall again. I feel like I momentarily lose my consciousness due to stress. Then, so suddenly, I hear a loud splash of water right behind me. Alerted, I turn around, bracing myself the incoming waves. This is when something strongly grips me by my leg and starts to pull me under water. What the? Terrified, I let out a loud groan. But as I feel another strong jerk, I take a deep breath and start to furiously kick with my legs. Hey, help! Luckily, it doesn't take long for my foot lands a brutal hit on my oppressor. Feeling my legs slip out from the unpleasant embrace, I immediately take this chance to get away. <laughs> Angus? Covering his muzzle with his hand, the wolf shoots me a pitiful look. Oh, how I wish you could see your face right now. Angus, what the hell, man? You scared the shit out of me. Ready to attempt murder, I bounce off the pool's wall and quickly swim back to him. Hey, calm down, bro. Everything's fine now. Angus, you're fully aware that I'm afraid of water. Why did you do such a thing? Uh, I just wanted to mess with you a little. Isn't that my responsibility as an older brother? No, it's not, you idiot. Hearing my sharp voice echo around the hall, I finally come to my senses. Angus, on the other hand, is in shock. He gulps loudly and looks back at me with a blank stare, unsure what to say next. Do you really have nothing to say after almost giving me a heart attack? Yeah, it's not like giving you a heart attack was my intention. 
I just wanted to snatch your swimming trunks, that's all. Uh, you know what? It would be super amazing if you didn't try to drown me while doing it. Yeah, I know. I'm still improving this technique. After all, practice makes perfect. Still trying to calm my breath, I look back at him with a forced smile while gritting my teeth. All jokes aside, you're absolutely right. It was very stupid of me and I should know better. I'm truly sorry about it. You're still mad at me, bro. Oh, come on. It couldn't be that bad. It was that bad. Seriously, I can still feel my heart racing. Oh, is that so? Well, let me see. Without waiting for my reply, the wolf shifts himself a bit closer to me, then reaches out his hand to place it gently on my chest. Mm. And? Oh, uh, yeah, it sure does beat like crazy. See? And it's all because of you. Wow. <laughs> Smooth talk, bud. Oh, wait, I didn't mean it like that. Oh, really? So you don't sound so sure. Perplexed, I look away, fighting with my thoughts on how to respond. This sudden change in flow of the conversation makes me feel absolutely derailed. But now when I think about it, that's actually a pretty standard thing to happen whenever I'm hanging out with Angus. Welks, so you're spacing out again. Ah, uh, sorry. And you're shaking. Is the water too cold for you? I don't know. For some reason, I feel like I'm freezing here. Or perhaps it's high time to get out? I wouldn't mind that. The only thing I can think of now is a long, hot shower. Say, are you coming with? Hmm. Well, I just got in, but... Smiling wryly, he tilts his head to look at the empty pool. I wait for his answer in anticipation. No, I'll pass. I'm going to make a few more rounds before getting out. Oh. Oh, why the long face? You've been hoping I could scrub your back or something? Ah, uh, no, uh, no, I was just asking out of curiosity. Well, it would be cool if you could help me out like that. I wink at him, almost biting my tongue. Taken aback, Angus looked at me with a mix of embarrassment and excitement on his face. Oh, relax, I was just joking. God damn it, Angus. No, you goofball. I mean, I was joking about the making a few more rounds part. Of course I'm coming with you. Huh? Uh, oh. He grins, then ruffles my hair. Okay, okay, I'm glad. Can you please stop messing up my hair? No, nah, no worries. It was already a huge mess to begin with. Wow, gee, thanks. I splashed some water in his face. That doesn't stop Angus from wearing that silly grin he always makes whenever he teases me. So, just to make things clear... Oh, yes? You were joking about staying to make a few more rounds, but then what about the other thing? You mean the scrubbing your back thing? I nod, trying to maintain a poker face, but I can already feel my cheeks burning. Hmm, maybe I will? That will, however, depend on what you can offer in return. Well, I can help you out by scrubbing yours as well. Uh, that alone won't be enough. Then how about scrubbing both your back and front? Okay, we're slowly getting somewhere. Wait, is that still not enough? Nope, you'll have to think of a better encouragement. <laughs> the wolf looks at me rapidly moving his eyebrows up and down. I can only wonder what inappropriate idea just popped in his head. Why do I have a feeling you already have something in mind? <laughs> yeah, there is that one thing. Oh? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not going to tell you what it is. Well, not yet, at least. I tilt my head, sending him a puzzled look, but Angus doesn't say anything more. Instead, there's that familiar cunning smile drawing on his face. All right, then, keep your secrets. Oh, you're giving up so soon? Yep, I know you just too well, Angus. Getting you to talk is like pulling teeth. We're afraid of getting bitten, are we? <laughs> yeah, and I bet that a big bad wolf like you wouldn't think twice before eating a little snack like me. Angus snorts, looking away flustered. The sight is truly priceless. Oh, am I wrong? Hmm, who knows? 
I'm really hungry though, so better watch out if you don't want to become my prey. With that said, Angus turns on his side and starts to slowly swim in the direction of the pool's ladder. Left alone, I shake my head in honest disbelief about the talk the two of us just had. Is he actually serious about any of this? Trying to clean my mind of dirty thoughts, I get out of the pool and silently follow him to the locker room. Welkin. Can you hear me? Welkin. Huh? What's wrong? Uh, no, it's nothing. A bit confused, I scratch the back of my head, then turn around to my locker. After grabbing both the towel and shampoo, I put my backpack away on the bench and glance back at Angus. Wearing nothing but a loosely tied towel around his waist, the wolf leans on the neighbouring locker and smiles at me deviously. Are you ready? Uh, yeah, I've got everything I need. Timidly, I turn around to face him, try not to stare too much. <laughs> you look awfully tense, you know. Why is that? We've already been here once. Thought you'd feel more comfortable by now. I am, and I will be, as long as you don't start making fun of me again for getting hard. The wolf immediately turns his attention down to my rising tent. But teasing you like this is such a fun thing to do. Yeah, I bet. Oh, well, just relax. It's just two of us here anyway. There's no need to be so stiff. Ah, see? You're doing it again. Well, is this really such a big problem? Yes, yeah, so you can stop now. Seriously, bro, you just need to chill and stop being so hard on me. I roll my eyes in response while Angus fist bumps my shoulder, laughing. So I just knew this was going to end up like this again. Hey, you're not angry, right? No, of course not. Ah, oh, good. Well, there's no need for you to feel bad or uncomfortable about a situation like this. Well, it's just how these things work. Like our tails wagging when we're happy. It's a natural thing. You can't control it. Jeez, I know, but still. <sighs> it's so weird being exposed like this, especially in front of you. Someone I've known for such a long time. Weird how? I don't know. I guess it makes me feel anxious because I don't know how you feel about it. Uh, I see. Well. Feeling the tension in the air, I look away, rubbing the back of my head. Anger seems to be lost in thought, looking for the right words to continue the conversation. And this weight is killing me. My heart beats like a drum and I have butterflies in my stomach. There's no turning back now. I've already made my resolution to be more open about my feelings. So there's nothing left for me but to get straight to the point and get that answer. No matter what it might be. Does it bother you? Huh? Does it bother you that I like you in that way? My words awkwardly trail off, creating another short pause. This time, however, Angus looks back at me with a soft smile. No. Of course not. I'm flattered. But I won't lie that I'm very surprised by this fact. I've known you for so long, and yet somehow you never really gave me the impression you might be into guys. Well, except for maybe our last visit here. I shrug, letting out a sigh of relief. Yeah, I know. It's difficult for me to talk about this, let alone act casually about it, even with my closest friends. Well, that's understandable. I don't blame you for it. You have nothing to worry about, though. I promise to keep it to myself. Thanks. You have no idea how, how happy I am knowing that you're cool with all of this. Yeah, same here. I'm glad you trusted me on this. <laughs> and to be honest, you now made me really curious about some stuff. Oh? Mm-hmm. I think you'd be up to talk a little bit more about this matter. Yeah, why not? But say, since you mentioned you're so hungry, how about we hit the town and talk about it over lunch? Just the two of us, and it's my treat. Oh, how nice. Also, is it just me, or does it almost sound like you're taking me on a date? Huh? Oh, no, no, I... <clears throat> I mean, you can consider it a date if you like. I wiggle my eyebrows and flash my best smile. Bursting with excitement, Angus lifts himself from his position. Flexing his chest, he vigorously puts his arms around his waist, almost dropping his towel along the way. 
Well damn, now isn't this exciting? I haven't been on a date in ages. <sighs> Angus, please. What? Don't tell me you're not serious about it. Were you? I gulp loudly while staring straight into his eyes. Hmm. A wide grin slowly draws on his face. Who knows? Maybe I was, maybe I wasn't. I frown, shaking my head. This was so his style. Why am I even surprised by hearing such an evasive answer coming from him? Nonetheless, I'm happy he still keeps up his usual upbeat mood. Well, anyway, let's talk in more action. We can discuss the details while taking that long, hot shower you wanted so badly. Right. The wolf responds with a single nod, then starts to walk away. Hey, wait up! I quickly take off my swimming trunks and toss them on the bench right next to my backpack. Holding the shampoo in one hand and the towel in the other, I follow Angus to the adjacent room. I hang my towel on the wall and turn around to look at Angus, who already stands in a stream of hot water. A soft huff escapes his lips as he presses his hands against the shower wall and sways slowly back and forth, allowing the water to spread around his entire body. Oh, man, I really needed that. Hmm? Uh, what's wrong, Wax? Oh, nothing. Just, uh, looking? Yeah, I can tell. You don't mind, right? Well, not even one bit. <laughs> oh, good. But hey, how about making yourself useful and helping me out by scrubbing my back, just like you suggested? Uh... Oh, it's perfectly okay if you change your mind. No, I didn't change my mind. I was just wondering if that talk we had back in the pool was for real or not. Well, of course it was for real. Really? Yeah, really. But, not until you will do your part first. Now, come on, just stop worrying and go for it. All right, then, get ready. Without further ado, I grab my bottle of shampoo and walk behind his back. Here we go. Continuously pumping on the dispenser's cap bit by bit, I meticulously apply the liquid all around his wide shoulders. Hmm, that should be plenty for now. Could you please hold the shampoo for a moment? Oh yes, of course. Angus cheerfully reaches behind his back and I pass him the bottle. With both my hands now free, I proceed to slowly spread the shampoo all over around his upper half. It doesn't take long for his entire back becomes covered in a thick layer of foam. Oh... Oh, this is so nice. Heh, <laughs> the best part is about to begin. With that said, I bury my fingers in the fur of his neck and start to gently massage it. To my surprise, Angus almost immediately loses his composure and starts to wiggle in pleasure. Feeling as his big tail happily brushes against my belly, I continue thoroughly scrubbing his back in silence. Is this okay, Angus? Okay? Well, I feel like I'm in heaven. You're surprisingly good at this. Is that so? Honestly, it's the first time I've done such a thing. Wow, so talented. <sighs> Thanks. Oh, I'm serious. Oh, please don't stop. This feels so nice. Well, technically I'm almost done, but... I think I could make an exception just for you. Oh, lucky me. <laughs> lucky you. Then, as he asked me to, I continue cleaning his back by repeating the whole process. And even though I'm the one giving the massage, I enjoy every second of this intimate moment we are sharing. Be this close with somebody. Such a simple thing, and yet it brings me so much happiness. So, have you planned where you want to get lunch? His sudden question immediately slaps him back to reality. Ah, uh, no, no, I haven't planned anything yet. Is there something you'd like in particular? Oh, I'm fine with whatever. Just promise me that you won't order anything spicy again. That pizza we had last time was just too much for me to handle. Yeah, I remember. What about you? What are you hungry for, Welks? Um, you know, I've been craving some pierogies for a while now. Oh, pierogies? Oh, what kind? Stuffed with fruit? Strawberries, maybe? I remember having them once while I was on a similar seaside trip as a little kid. Oh boy, they were delicious. Oh, I bet. Although it sounds more like a side dish rather than the main course to me. 
Well, that was just my random idea. I'm also fine with whatever, as long as we find a nice, quiet restaurant. Also, I'm done scrubbing. You can go rinse now. The wolf steps under the shower head and starts rubbing his fur. Giving more space, I walk out to the niche and lean on the opposite wall. My arms crossed, I silently admire how the melting foam slides down his lower half. And good lord, there's a lot to admire. It should be illegal to have such a nice ass. All right, now how about you take a break and I'll do some scrubbing. Oh, uh, sure, that sounds fair. Well then, what are you waiting for? Come over here and rinse yourself as well. A bit embarrassed, I push myself off the wall and slowly approach him. Meanwhile, Angus takes a few steps away, then looks down the shampoo bottle in his hand. Let's see. Milk and almond? Well, no wonder it smells so nice. I know, right? This one is actually quite pricey, but it truly works wonders on the fur. You'll see soon enough. Clearly intrigued, the wolf applies some liquid, liquid to his hand, but suddenly he turns to me with a puzzled frown, eyes wide. Ro, what the hell? Your shampoo looks like cum. What? What? No, it doesn't, you doofus. Well, it totally does, see? It's even just as sticky as cum. Sending me a smug look, he starts to play with the sticky liquid between his fingers, gesturing suggestively at the same time. Sighing, I shake my head and finally step under the stream of water. Okay, fine. Maybe it does look a bit, little bit like cum. So what? Oh, nothing. I was just... wondering. About what? Oh, how long it took you to fill this whole bottle? What, what? Oh my god! Angus, you're such a perv, you know that? Me? A perv? Yes, you. Seriously, man. Do you really have to be so horny all the time? I'm the horny one? Well, that's rich. You better look at yourself, Mr. Rockhard. Huh? Oh, please, don't even try to act surprised. Do you really think I didn't notice how you've been ogling my privates this whole time, you little pervert? What? But you said... Uh, oh, now you've crossed the line. No more shampoo for you. With that said, I quickly reach out my hand in an attempt to snatch the bottle from him. Unfortunately, Angus is just too fast for me. With remarkable agility, he dodges my grabby hand by taking a quick step back, then immediately raises the bottle high in the air, making it impossible for me to reach it. Give it back. Oh, no, no, no. You just relax. It's time for me to return the favour. Thanks, but no thanks. I'll wash myself on my own. Oh, there's no need to get so mad. Come on now, you're the one who asked for it in the first place, no? Let your big bro have some fun as well. <sighs> Fine, whatever. Do your thing, but please refrain from making any more inappropriate comments, okay? No promises. The wolf grins back at me, and starts to slowly apply the liquid all over my upper half. A little bit here, a little bit over there. <laughs> okay, Angus, that's enough. No, -uh, bro, I'm far from being done. Hey, not on my face. Well, then stop wriggling so much. I was aiming for your head. Seriously, just don't use the whole thing at once. It's expensive shampoo. Oh, don't you worry. The two of us will refill a bottle like this in no time. I snort, gently smacking his nose. It's just unbelievable. What? You don't like my dirty talk? Well, I won't lie. It's a bit too dirty for my tastes. Maybe I'll just get used to it eventually. Maybe. No one's ever talked to me like that before, so it's something I have to get you accustomed to, I guess. Ah, oh, I see. Well, in that case, I'll dial it down. But uh, just a little. <laughs> Good. Anyway, look at all this mess I just made on your front. Do you want me to take care of it? Eh, uh, yeah, please do. Hearing my response, Angus passes me the shampoo bottle. All right, then, I'll start from the very top. Smiling from ear to ear, he buries his hands in my hair and gently massages my head. I close my eyes, trying to relax. But just a single thought of him, standing naked right in front of me, is enough to make me feel hot again. Wow, this shampoo sure does get very foamy. I told you, you should have listened. Yeah. But don't worry, I'll try to spread it on the rest of your body so it won't go to waste. Oh, does that mean I can expect you to help me clean more than just my front? 
Well, you did set the bar pretty high by putting in all this extra work cleaning my back, so I now kind of feel obligated to do my job exceptionally thoroughly. How exceptionally thoroughly are we talking here? Wiping the foam off my forehead, I look up at him, see his expression. Hmm. I'll leave it up to you to decide. The wolf winks at me and shifts his hands down to my torso. He then kneels down and continues scrubbing my front with his, his eyes locked on mine. Uh. Well, go on, just ask me anything and I'll do it. Wait, anything? Oh yes, anything. I wouldn't even mind scrubbing your whole body if you asked me to. Wow. What, would that be too much fun? Flustered, I look down at his big hands, slowly making their way down to my belly. Uh, no, no, uh, I'd like that, uh, but... But? There's actually something else I'd like to ask you about. Well, tell me, what is it that you want? I tilt my head and our eyes meet again. It's not about scrubbing, though. It's about something we were discussing a bit earlier. Suddenly his eyes widen and an awkward silence fills the room. Concerned by his odd reaction, I think about backing off. But at the same time, I'm just too damn curious. I want to get a proper answer, whether we really are going on a date or not. Something we were discussing a bit earlier, huh? <laughs> oh, well, can you little devil. I would never have thought you'd be up for making such a bold move. I raise my eyebrows and smile. Seems that Angus already knows what's on my mind. I'm serious about it. I just wasn't sure if you'll like the idea, because it came out all of a sudden. Well, it's okay with me as long as you're absolutely sure about doing it. I mean, how can I say no to such a sweet cinnamon roll as yourself? Something feels off. Are we really on the same page here? A cute little cinnamon roll. A perfect snack for a big bad wolf like myself. Woof! Holy shit, we are not on the same page. We are not even in the same book. Uh, Angus. Petrified, I look away, feeling his hands slide down towards my crotch. Well, don't worry. I won't bite you. Unless you ask me to. Trying to keep my cool, I roll my eyes in response, thinking it's only a matter of seconds where Angus will back off and start to laugh out loud, turning this whole ordeal into another one of his jokes. But the moment his big hands reach their destination, I finally realise the seriousness of the situation, decide to stop him from taking this even further. Yeah, Angus, oh wait, yeah, you misunderstood. What? During my shout, Angus freezes momentarily. I was talking about a date. A date? Yes, you didn't give me the answer earlier. I just wanted to ask you to clarify it. I... I thought you were referring to... Covering his beet red face, the wolf gets up from his knees and slowly turns away from me. Uh... <laughs> well, shit. Uh, sorry about that. No, no, it's my bad. I should make myself more clear. Oh, don't be stupid. You did nothing wrong. Neither did you. I only got a little surprised, that's all. Just surprised? Yes, I thought you were only joking, but you're actually serious about doing it, huh? He shrugs, then slapped his forehead, letting out a long sigh. Uh, yeah, I won't deny it. I would totally eat you if you didn't stop me. Wow. <laughs> that's some serious hunger, bro. Well, what can I say? I'm truly ravenous. While our silly exchange makes both of us smile, it doesn't really help to ease the tension that still hangs in the air. Luckily, though, it didn't take too long for me to shift our conversation to a more down-to-earth note. Well, it's perfectly understandable the big guy like you would have a big appetite, but don't worry, I've got you covered. Oh? Yep, just like I said before, I'm taking you wherever you want to eat and we'll have a real feast. No exceptions, no holding back. Sounds good? Ah, uh, uh, of course. But hey, if you're really going to buy me lunch, then maybe... Maybe I could get us tickets to the cinema? Would you like to catch a movie? I nod back to him, feeling my tail wagging like crazy. Yeah, definitely. Well, we have a deal. Great, a lunch and a movie. <laughs> you know, suddenly this really is starting to sound like a date. Oh, yeah, I know. With that said, the wolf grabs his towel and loosely ties it around his waist. 
Well then, I'll go ahead and get myself ready. It's an important afternoon, after all. Is that okay with you if we meet by the hotel's entrance in an hour? Yeah, fine by me. Cool. Uh, take your time to cool and dry off. See you soon, Welks. And so Angus happily walks away to the locker room, leaving me all by myself. Overjoyed by the outcome of our talk, I drop down on my knees, clenching my fists and smiling like an idiot. Can't believe it. Angus and I are actually going on a date. A real date. This is crazy. I have to be dreaming. Pumped up, I quickly get up from the floor and step under the shower to finally rinse myself from the foam. Good lord, this is just too good to be true. This is just too good to be true. As the doubts begin to cloud my mind, I lean over the shower's wall and close my eyes trying to gather my thoughts. This is, however, when I start to remember how lost I felt when I woke up alone in a swimming pool not that long ago. Am I... Dreaming? Suddenly I start to feel cold again. Am I really here? And so suddenly I start to feel light again. Was all of this just my imagination? Welkin? No. Welkin? No, 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 please, no. Hey, get up, you sleepyhead. <laughs> Time to roll to bed, you lazy bum. Oh, Welkin? Hey, can you hear me? Ah, uh, yeah. I'm awake now. Here we go. To be continued. So I hope you enjoyed that. So it's going to be... Uh, probably a couple of months or so now before we get the next uh, Angus update. Obviously, Tearving's working on this uh, one character at a time, which is kind of the best way to do something like this. So, we, uh, the uh, Patreon update at the moment is Kegar, and then I guess Rowley will be the next one along then. So, there will be a bit of a gap before the next video comes out. But uh, all the links are in the description for Patreon, itch, uh, what have you. So feel free to download, and you can see the uncensored version, if you do that. Or if you can, pop over to Patreon and throw some money at this project. And the next video is probably going to be the next password one for Dean. I'm getting a little behind on those, so I'd like to uh, get the current public uh, day out before Grizz updates another one. So I'm not too far behind on that, but I'll talk about that in the next video. And then we still have William's update in the smoke room, which Doug the Red Panda did the other week. So you, if you want to see what's going on, you can watch his version before I get to it. And then I still have After Class Lars Day 7 to get done very soon, plus other things. So, until next time, thanks for watching. Bye for now.